What you uh, you got a question? Come on up, brother. I ain't got no question. I just came to listen. Hey, check this out. This, hey, this this young man over here, this brother bought it. This your grandson. He bought his son over here to listen to the prophets of the Most High. But some of you other men, you don't even bring your kids over. This man here. Hey, do you see yourself on this sign, brother? Check this out. Yeah, this is twelve tribes. You got. These people come, these are 12 sons that Jacob had. His name was changed to Israel. These sons, they brought forth the nation of Israel. Which son are you? This on the left hand side over here, on my, on my, my left, this is what God calls you. On the right side is what the slave master called you. Where do you see yourself? Come on, you come close, we ain't gonna bite you, come on. Hey, bro, no, man. Yeah, just take a look. I just came to check y'all out, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you checking us out, you see this right here? You from the tribe of Judah. That little uh, uh, son of yours, he from the tribe of Judah. Do you know who comes from the tribe of Judah? Jesus the Christ. You got Jesus the Christ's blood running through you. You got Jesus, he wants to learn. You got Jesus Christ's blood running through you. All our lives, we've been taught this white image of Christ. That's why our brothers, they laugh at us. Uh, they make mockery of us. They don't understand that Jesus Christ is not a white man. God is not a white man. This is what we've been taught to us in slavery. He brought the true prophets out to teach you what you don't learn in these so-called churches. When you go to these churches, all you do, sing, dance, and give out your money. Let's get the image of Christ right quick. Give me Revelations 1 and 1 to show these brothers what Christ looked like. Because the thing is, why do Christ have to be revealed again in these last days? Because this image right here that came out in the Renaissance age means the rebirth of the Caucasians. It destroyed our people. It destroyed our mind. It destroyed our perception of Christ. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The word revelation, the root word means is to reveal. It means it's going to reveal Jesus the Christ again. A second time for a specific reason. Read which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Let's see what John saw. Read what you got. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs, meaning his beard. That's an old Quaker word for beard, hairs. His head and his hairs were what? Were white like wool. White in texture. That means you might say gray. Gray is when you mix it with black and white. But it's fully white when it has no gray in it. I mean, it has no uh, black in it. It's fully white. And the wool. Wool. In the Catholic dictionary, they say wool is the hair of the Negroes. They had to quickly take that away before you got, got you was able to read and figure out that they was talking about you. All right, read what you got. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, some of these preachers, well, majority of these preachers, they don't even know that prophecy. Let's get that in Genesis. Let's find out why Jesus Christ's eyes were as a flame of fire. That's how you know the true prophets are the most high. When we can go scripture for scripture and explain it. Because we are the pro we are upon the, the most high God. He commissioned us to come out and teach you the truth according to the Bible. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. If anybody know the first miracle that Jesus the Christ did was turn water into wine. The New Testament they called him a glutton and a wine bibber. Meaning that he eat a lot and he drunk wine. That's what the Pharisees called him. Keep reading. And his teeth white with milk. I mean his teeth white with milk, meaning white with these laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, go back to Revelation. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes was a flame of fire. So we just showed you the prophecy on why Christ's eyes was a flame of fire. Keep reading. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. Hey, can anybody tell me what color brass is? 
What color is brass? Anybody know? It's a derivative of brown. So Jesus Christ, his feet were brown as if they what? As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burn in a furnace. Anything you burn, white rice or anything, it gets dark. It gets black. So Jesus the Christ was a black man. We're here to teach you this. Let's get, give me Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 7. This is why we are out here. Because for too long, our people have been lied to. Our people don't know nothing. They don't know the truth. They've been following doctrine here, doctrine there, what this person say, what that person say, but they never read the Bible for themselves, or the people never read out of the Bible. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. See, that's the problem. We have no leaders in the house to teach the children diligently. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. We're going to see why you can't teach your kids diligently. We're going to see why you don't understand anything. We're going to see why. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. God said that for disobeying his law, statutes, and commandments, you are going to be discontinued from your heritage. Your heritage consists of the food you ate, the clothing you wear, the gods you serve, the high holy days you celebrate, the moral laws, how you deal with yourself and God, civil laws, how you deal with one another. These are things that you forgot. Today we got our sisters walking around half naked. And then the men lust after them. And then they get them pregnant. And then they leave them. And now you created another generation of single parent households. Our brothers walk around with their butts hanging out. Thinking that's cool. Not knowing that they used to call it uh, butt breaking in slavery. Well, the, the, the slave master would take the strongest and most rowdiest uh, Israelite man and have sex with him to break him in front of all the other people. Break their spirits and his spirit. You go to jail, you sag your pants, showing that you're available in jail because you turned to a homosexual. But out here on the streets, our brothers walk around like it's cool. There's nothing cool about your butt cheeks hanging out. There's nothing cool about that. They wonder why you can't get a job. You got tattoos all over your face. You got your butt cheeks hanging out. You got piercings all in your eyes, your nose, your lips, all over your face, and you wonder why you can't get a job. You want to complain. You breaking God's laws, that's why you can't get a job. Because curses come along with certain things. So you got to understand everything is spiritual. For an action, there's a reaction. So you break God's laws, you want to go around and fornicate with the sisters, you want to commit adultery when you're married, there's a spiritual punishment. It's called AIDS. It's called herpes. It's called gonorrhea. It's called divorce. Now she done took all your money because you cheated on her. You got sisters walking around in their pants, tight pants. When they come outside the house, the first thing, before they come out, the first thing they look at is their butt. Then what, what that bring along? A spiritual thing. You're getting raped. You're getting pregnant by the rapists. Now you put the child up for abortion. You see the destruction of our families, our family structure by breaking God's laws? Our brothers don't understand, you don't realize that. We are here for you, we are here to teach you. We ain't out here to hate you. Matter of fact, give me Leviticus 19 and 17. Because, check this out, if you have children, and you tell your son or your daughter to obey your rules in your house, and they disobey your rules in your house, you're gonna punish them. You're not punishing your child because you hate them. You're punishing your child because you love them and you don't want them to die. Because say your son or your daughter was stealing at a store and you let that ride and you did nothing about it. So they continue to do it, they continue to do it. Now they're breaking somebody's house not knowing that that person was at home. Now your child is dead because they blew a hole in it. All because you hated your child because you didn't correct them when they was wrong. That's what we're doing. Read what the scriptures say. 
Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. We ain't hate our brother. We are here to correct you according to the scriptures, according to your heritage that you was disconnected from, according to your laws that God gave you. We are here to correct you. You don't know you're doing wrong because this system, this society was set up for you to continue to break God's law. Read what you got. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. To rebuke thy neighbor means to correct you. You brothers, on the Sabbath day, we correcting you that that's not correct in God's eyesight. You're supposed to be resting. You're supposed to be taking the day off. You're supposed to be spending time in the scriptures. You're supposed to be spending time with the family. That's one thing about a lot of us. We work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and we have no time for the family. That's why you have a division in the household. That's why the wife do her thing. The kids do their thing. The husband do his thing. That's when you have, the devil can get in, involved in that to have a man's whisper sweet things in her ear. Why are you not there? Next thing you know, she committing adultery on you because you work too much. God's laws are set up for specific reasons. Read what you got. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Because we're not, we're trying not to suffer sin upon you. When you go to these churches, brothers, they're not going to tell you what sin is. Sin is not anything you do wrong. Let's see what sin is. Give me that. Let's let the Bible speak from now on. The thing about it, we've been in this, in, in this society for so long till we listen to what somebody tell us versus what the Bible tells us. And it's time out for that. Read what you got. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So we're going to get the, the law on the Sabbath day. We're going to get the law on the Sabbath day. Because we didn't know this in church. When I was growing up in church, all we did was go. They sung a song. The preacher opened the book, read two words, closed it, and jumped around and started ha, ha, and slapping the podium. And everybody jumps up talking about preaching. And they said nothing but made noises. Then pastor collects and played around, and now you go home broke. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It says to remember God's Sabbath day and to keep it holy. The word holy means separate. So how do we keep God's Sabbath day separate? Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday evening to Saturday evening is the Sabbath day. So you got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and up to Friday evening to do all your work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day, Sabbath day, the seventh day is the day of the Lord thy God. Let's see what you're supposed to do on this separate holy day that God set aside for himself. Read. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. You don't supposed to do no work. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. That's Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Why, why don't your hair look like that? Why would you hide the hair of Jesus Christ? Don't you know you made you, you just like him? Don't you know the hair that grows out of your head is on the same head of Christ and on the head of God? So, come on back. All praises to the Most High. All praises. This sister didn't know that. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his way. It said, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. You so-called black sisters, you so-called brothers, you envy your oppressor. A lot of sisters, they got weave in their hair. What nation of people other than us wear somebody else's hair on their head thinking that's beauty? But don't nobody see a problem with that. And then... The brother goes out and get a, a, a white woman, then the black woman is mad. My thing is this, why get the fake when I can get the original? That's right. 
So you can't get mad at a brother for doing it because you want to look like them. So he just chose to get the real thing. But that's a sin in itself. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 29. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head, God say a plague. A plague, a plague upon the head. That means it's a sickness. A plague is a sickness, a disease, something unclean. Read. Or the beard. Or in your beard. Because I've seen a lot of brothers out here, they put blonde hair and all this other stuff in their beards and in their hair. Just like the sisters. Read on. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. Yellow is the French word. Well, blonde is the French word for yellow. If you're walking around with blonde hair in your head, God says you have a plague. You have a plague. See, that's a sin right there. She, that's a sin right there, but our people don't know that. She's in the car with her children. Let's see what God says about that. Yeah, give me Deuteronomy 7 and 3. See, these are these are laws that your preacher's not teaching you. These are things that can get you killed. The most high don't play when it comes to his laws. That's why I butts in slavery now. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. It's saying, do not marry the other nations. Do not marry the other nations. I know some of you brothers, you like that taboo. You want you a white woman because you couldn't get it in slavery. But God says, that's not to be. That's a sin. You don't supposed to take his daughter to marry. And our sons, we don't supposed to give our daughters to them to marry. God says it's a abomination. Read. For they will turn away the son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. See, a lot of you people walk around here because you don't think God has has your judgment. Give me Ecclesiastes 8. You know what I want out there, right? 8 and 11? Is it 8 and 11? Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. See, this is, this is what's going on right here. You see, okay, I sinned today, I sinned yesterday, I committed fornication today, I committed, uh, I robbed somebody yesterday. Now, this is why you continue to do it, because you don't know this. Let's get something on that. Let's get a prophecy out of the Bible. Give me that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So, you know, when you go to jail and you done murdered somebody and they put you on death row, they said they're going to execute you five years later. Well, that's sort of similar way the Most High do it. He got a choice whether he's going to do it now or do it then or do it later. Read that again. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So that means your heart, let's get the heart so we can explain to them what the heart is. It's fully set in to do evil. So, you got a young man that robbed somebody. He didn't get caught. So he go and rob somebody again. He didn't get caught. And that third time he went to rob somebody, he got killed because the person was at home. That's judgment from the Most High. Read what you got. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So your heart is your mind. So your mind telling you that, well, God didn't punish me today. Uh, I can do it tomorrow. Well, according to what the Bible says, it says that just because God didn't do it today, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Give me Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Because this is some things you need to know. That's why the prophets are out here. That's why we out here. To teach our people what's right and what's wrong. Because you've been taught lies. You've been taught things that are wrong is right. Versus the things that are wrong, you're not supposed to do. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. God let you know he stands alone. God let you know what he's about to say right now, nobody has a 
part in, in what he's gonna do. Read what you got. I kill. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God does what? I kill. I thought you said the devil does it. Well, the Bible's letting you know that God says he kill. Read. And I make a lie. And God brings you back when you're on that operating table and you got high blood pressure, diabetes, and you die and you come back. God brought you back. Read. I wound. Oh my goodness, I got shot, but I didn't die. I got shot in my arm. What God said he do? I wound. God said he wound you. I got in the car wreck. The car is total, but I got out without a scratch. God did it. Read. And I healed. So God healed you from your disease. Man, I went to the doctor. They said I had cancer, man. Stage three cancer. I ain't got but six months to live. Man, I went back yesterday and they can't find the cancer. Who heals you? Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So what God has planned for you, you can't escape. Just let you know there's only one God, brother. He just told you he stand by himself. So you brothers hear this over and over and over again. The sisters hear it over and over again. The kids hear it over and over again. Just because you don't get put to death today doesn't mean you don't get put to death tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised with, for you. Read what you got. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. It says to repent. That means to remember your culture and your heritage. Somebody tell me what church you went to. They told you who you were. I'll wait. Work it out. I'll wait. None of you can sit here and say that you went to a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, or any kind of church, and they told you according to the Bible who you were. The prophets of the Most High are reading the Bible to let you know who you are. That's what these signs represent. Your slavery identifies you to who you are today. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 2846. Deuteronomy 28, 46. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. The curses in Deuteronomy are on the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians for a sign and a wonder. To let you know who you are in the last days. If you are a Negro and you can't make ends meet, you miss a payday from check to check to check to check. You fit these curses. If you're a sister and all you are looked out as looked upon as as a thought, a whore, a stripper, wearing blonde hair in your head, trying to rule the man, these curses fit you. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.